um, I hope you guys are all staying sane um, with, during isolation, and I hope you all saw the notification to stay home from um, the county. So, um, from Harris County. So, unless it, unless it's, if you don't have essential business, you need to stay home. Um, which can be hard. So, if you're feeling overwhelmed and frustrated and a little stir crazy, it's okay, it's completely understandable, and I hope this video will help give you something to do, um, distract you for a little bit, and inspire you for your last project, the uh, three sculptures project. So let's look at how artists use uh, materials, everyday materials, to create really great works of art. And um, so, yeah. Oop, whoop, too fast. There we go. <laughs> Marcel Duchamp, bicycle wheel. This one was built in 1951. This is a remake of his original in 1913. Um, so Duchamp and the Dadaists really expanded our view of what art materials can be with his ready-mades, pushing art, like pushing and questioning about um, industrial-made objects. They're still made by humans. And why can't they be art as well? And what is art? So, really pivotal work. You may hate it. You may like it. That's up to you. And, you know, both views are valid. So here, um, following along the pushing of what art can be into and skipping ahead quite a bit into the 1960s with Fluxus. So you guys being U of H students are lucky to have um, an expert on Fluxus in our art history department. Uh, Natalie Herring. So if you're interested, if this piques your interest, definitely take her class. I believe she has a class just on Fluxus, and her art history classes are great. Anyways, so, you know, make sure you take some. <laughs> Sorry, I should not be drinking out of a metal straw right now, huh? I know how to record videos. Really, I do. Um, so this is by George McCannis, uh, Fluxus Manifesto. So this is his um, manifesto for Fluxus. And um, Fluxus is a movement that expanded our view of art as an experience combining the visual view of an art experience, excuse me, um, combining the visual arts, music, performance, and writing to make anti-art and anti-consumerist or anti-commercialism movement. This started in the 1960s and artists have brought this into the current day as well. Um, the artists who are still living and working in this fluxus mode still make art today and use current technologies to expand upon it. Um, 
And Makanis is a founding member of Luxus. Or was, excuse me, was. So. Um, this is posted on Blackboard now, so take your time and read this to yourself. Look at the use of the handwritten and the use of the um, mimeographed, I believe, at that time. So you can create a sculpture that, or a sculptural work that may just be words. Maybe you just have paper and um, a pen on you. You can still create art and create a couple pieces that way. Um, yeah. So here we have a piece by Yoko Ono, who was also one of the founding members of Fluxus. And um, she still continues to work. Her Twitter account is an extension of her work, Grapefruits. Um, so you can go check that out. <laughs> and so this is We Are All Water, done in 2005. Three scores in Japanese and in English in a round plastic box. There were 400 of these made. And then it, this is small. It's something that fits in the palm of your hand, being six by four inches about. So, and um, language, the use of language is very important in Fluxus work in general, but in um, Ono's work. Uh, exploring their, the meaning of words and how they affect our perception of the world. Um, all Think of all the words that have like double meanings and things like that. Um, how can you create a sculpture with words? That's something you could think about as well, especially if you're really interested in language. How can you translate language into an object or an object into language? This is Nam Jun Pak, also a founding Fluxus member. Um, his work really pioneered the use of TV and video in art and coined the phrase electronic superhighway to predict the future of communication in the internet age. So here we have these screens um, in potted plants. So how could you could make a piece that uses and explores your connection to the internet in a way or and communication, especially now where we're so dependent on it. Um, and even before the um, quarantining happened, <laughs> right so how could you maybe you make pieces using your um, electronic devices in some way making them you could even use a like make something to hold your electronic piece that like attaches to your body in a certain way or maybe you want to distance yourself from it for a while so you create a barrier to it and what would that look like? How would that work? You could definitely make three sculptures using that. You could make a whole body of, you could make art for the rest of your life doing that, but <laughs> same with all these ideas, clearly people have. So um, some, some things to think about and to expand upon what sculpture can be. 
So, yeah. This is um, Bruce Nauman, and um, Bruce Nauman's work often dealt with like what could be done in the studio. And um, his early works in the 1960s, he often recorded himself doing um, repetitious and banal, like banal everyday actions in his studio. And um, this is an extension of that. This is mapping the studio to with color shift, flip flop, and flip, flip, excuse me, with color shift, flip, flop, and flip flop, Fat Chance John Cage. 2001. Um, so this is Nauman filmed his studio one hour per night intermediate, intermediately over a period of several months to generate nearly 42 hours of footage. He set up cameras at various locations, recorded approximately six hours at each location, and simultaneously projected it onto seven screens. Yeah, onto seven screens. There we go. This is the problem when I read things off paper, as you guys know. Um, if you are not familiar with who John Cage is, definitely look him up. He uh, was a musician. I'd have to double check if he is or was a musician in the 1960s that really helped influence the um, Fluxus movement. So if you're interested in sound and exploring what all sound can be, you definitely need to look up who John Cage is. This is um, moving across to Italy and looking at works involving involved in Arte Provera. Um, so these works were done in the mid-19, or Arte Provera was established in the 1960s, mid-1960s, and it utilizes non-traditional and non-conventional materials. Here, this is done by Mario Mertz, 853. Done, this one happened to be done in 1985. This is metal, glass, twigs, wire mesh, tar paper, tar, neon, and string. And Mario um, Mertz creates and recreates this igloo shape out of a myriad of materials. So, um, just simple yet interesting form out of different materials. And how does that change? So maybe you're just interested in a form and using various materials around your house to recreate to recreate it and create it or to create it. Yeah. Um, Gilberto Zaro, Stromboli Porto or Stromboli Port. Done, this is done in 1990. Um, Zorro is also a um, Pivotal artist for the Arte Prave, Arte Provera movement. There we go. Words. Um, again, using non traditional materials. This is a canoe, a crucible, copper, iron, polyester, copper sulfate, fluorescence, water, and salt. And. Um, Zorro is 
interested in energy and um, the tensions of chemical, the chemical and physical world. Um, when he makes his work, he assumes the role of an alchemist, enabling the conversion of materials from one state to another. This continuum is openly present for the viewer to see, removing any element of illusion from the equation. So following, oh, that's a bad picture. I need to put a better picture in there for you guys. Sorry about that. Following the thread of Arte Provera is a very current um, show called, uh, or exhibition that had a lot of artists working in a similar vein of the past three artists and called Unmonumental. So if these works really interest you, definitely check out um, information on that show. I believe in the library we have the um, catalog for Unmonumental. So definitely check that out, especially, yeah, you can still check out books. Just have to um, have them shipped or pick them, pick them up. Um, anyway, so this is Issa Gangson. Um, Magder Hus, excuse me, Magdich Huspisch, Make Yourself Pretty. Um, it's been a long time since I took German, so sorry about the horrible pronunciations. Uh, this was done in between 19 or 2015 and 2016. This is a view of the installation. And here we have these objects of combined, like these combined objects to create these pieces. So, um, Gingson likes to investigate um, the rush of the big city and scene from the perspective of her brain. Um, she wants to animate the viewer, hold them, hold a mirror up to them. Um, so it's, you're looking at a garish, hyperventilating, late capitalist culture. We're forced to consider how it forms us, our environment, our identities, our interactions. There we go. This is um, Alexander Birkin. Alexandria Birkin, sorry about that. Drape, 2007. This is made out of wood, concrete, cloth, wax, screws, wire, and steel. So Birkin has a fashion design background and is interested in radical aspects of the of handmade culture. Um, she often works with fragmentary with a fragmentary array of irregular objects and organic shapes, often that she often colors. and is hung and displayed on strings and aluminum rods. So, um, yeah. 
also an artist in the unmonumental exhibit. So. But what could you do with clothes and bits of tree, right? This is John Bach. This is from a um, installation called Sweet Sub Nothing Spores, done in 2014. Um, Bach starts off with everyday life and dwells on the most absurd aspects, allowing What's that word? Allowing us to enter a colored microcosm of made up of overturned spaces, substances, and objects with unseen shapes that become animated characters, animals with human features, and vice versa. So what about your everyday life or absurd things that have been happening to you that you could expand upon in your work? This is um, Shanique Smith. This piece was done in 2017. Talisman for... Talisman for Eternal Delight. Um, Shanique Smith is known for her monumental creations of fabric, clothing, and calligraphy that are inspired by a vast nature of things that we consume and discard, which resonate on a personal and social scale. So what can you do with your things at home? You could easily take things at home, mash them together to create a piece. Here we have like a balloon and clothing. There's like a squeezy ball, this like mesh bag here, or maybe those are tights. Those might be tights. Um, this looks like a, there might be like a couple balls there, some paint. Um, just feel free to explore and like push things together and see what happens with your pieces. You know, what happens when you combine a plastic cup and a screw? You know, I don't know find out. This is um, Judith Scott, who um, had some, um, had learning disabilities as well as some uh, physical disabilities, and later in life, um, after her sister took over her care, um, was introduced to the arts and started um, making these bound pieces that she would call totems. And here is a video that you can click on to learn more about her process and watch her do her or learn about yeah learn about her process and watch her make some work there are a lot of great articles on her
this is something if you want to you could do with your family members with like wrapping paper even if you have wrapping paper at home just keep wrapping an object and pass it along to each family member to wrap it some more and watch it transform that could be a couple pieces and lastly we have uh, Tara Donovan and um, her pieces she works with everyday objects and transforms them into these naturalistic looking forms often monumental in scale excuse me in scale so this is just buttons and glue and I like this image because you could see the buttons and you can also see how the color intensifies on these buttons um, as they stack up with each other so here it's playing with the repetition of oops repetition of an object to create these naturalistic forms. So maybe you have a whole bunch of paper napkins or I'm trying to think of something that a lot of people might have in their home that can be used right now. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you just pick up a whole bunch of grass and start combining it to create a new thing. Right? Um, so with this project, you need to create three small sculptures. You, they can be larger if you want to go larger, go large. If I'm assuming because you guys are at home, you may not have the space or the materials to go very large. So that's why I say small. I never want to make you feel like you can't go above and beyond. That's where I want you to go is above and beyond. Um, and expect you to go above and beyond. So try your best. If you need any help, I'm here. Just send me a message and I will help you the best I can. Feel free to post your works in progress, especially if you're having trouble with it. I'm still here to help you guys with that. And I've been missing you already and hearing your exciting project ideas. Um, so yeah, <laughs> good luck. And I can't wait to see these sculptures when you get them done. Bye.